You know, the Leafs could learn something from the Blue Jackets. Yeah, like two one series leads against the Boston Bruins aren't enough. I, I was I was gonna make it into a whole bit about how they lost players because they had to pay them a lot of money and the Leafs paid their players a lot of money. They won, man! What? What? You point me to the lie! Those are facts! Aw, oh, screw your facts! What about my feelings? You spend way too much time on Twitter. Hi, kids! Victorious puppies! Huh? This team is ruining my life! Why do I watch hockey? Stress relief! Okay. We can! The way this team's looking, you're gonna have lots of practice! The coffee is good! The cannon is silent, almost. And the Leafs win! 4-1 to one over the Columbus Blue Jackets. So how do I feel about this one? It's interesting. Wednesday's game, the Leafs dominated the Senators pretty much from, well, not from puck drop onward, but the shift after that. Still, it was pretty hairy for most of the game, and the Leafs ended up winning 5-3. This one, the Leafs come away with the three-goal win, the 4-1 win over Columbus, but not as clean. The difference, of course, Freddie, maybe no more birthday nerves, had a fantastic game. I think it's still really early in the season to be looking too much at team performances, but there were a few individual performances that were great. Start of the game, I already alluded to this, Freddie Anderson was great. Really held the Leafs in it and honestly, Columbus could have done what Brady Kachuk and the Sens did in the first game and scored within the first 30 seconds. They really got to start better. Okay, without looking, is this video from 2019, 18 or 17? But the Leafs managed to find themselves on the power play. I like the power play. Keep doing that. Let's see. This was the Leafs' power play, the entire thing. You ready? Puck goes to Riley off the faceoff. Riley to Matthews, back to Riley. Riley to Marner, Marner to Tavares, back to Marner, goal. One more time, off the faceoff, puck to Riley, Riley to Matthews, back to Riley, Riley to Marner, Marner to Tavares, Tavares back to Riley, goal. Seven seconds that thing took, and there was about a pass per second. Unsung part of this little power play, Andreas Janssen just parked right in front, being a nuisance. Jonas Corpusalo can't even see the thing, and Marner's just got a wide open net to shoot at. Now we learned from last year, not to be seduced by the early season success of a power play, but wow, does the Leafs' first power play unit especially look amazing. Vroom vroom, mother beat. Now, for those of you who don't know, and this has been talked about a lot, the Leafs have two new assistant coaches. One is Dave Haxtell, who was the head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers to begin last season. The other is Paul McFarlane. Now, he was behind the Florida Panthers bench, and he was running their power play. And you might go, oh, the Panthers. Yeah, well, their power play was second best in the entire NHL. They could score goals. Should have been top five in the league. Tavares, Matthews, Marner, Riley, who had 72 points, by the way, and either Kadri or sometimes Janssen. But it began the season, Tavares, Matthews, Marner, Riley, Kadri. That is stunning, and it wasn't that great. And a big part of why the league was able to shut that power play down after a while is it seemed like they did the same thing every time. Puck goes to Mitch Marner, and... He's going to pass it. And if the puck went to Austin Matthews, he's got one of the best shots in the league, but he's left-handed and on the left side, so he's got less to shoot at. Marner shot off and didn't get through. If I'm not mistaken, he only had three power play goals last year, I think. So Mitch, with that, like, three options of passing that he had last year, I just started calling the Mitch thing because... That's what it was. For a while it worked, then it stopped. So what has changed? Well, a few things. Kadri's not there anymore, unfortunately. Tavares is the bumper. But the main thing is Matthews and Marner <gasps> switched. Lefty on the right, righty on the left. You're telling me that over the past year it took eight preseason games, 82 regular season games, seven more in the playoffs, that's 97 games. Someone had to get fired and someone had to get hired just to be like, what if we, like, uh, switched them? A lot of fans just screaming at the television during this preseason like, Yeah, what a great idea! I wish someone had screamed it for months on end! Here's what I think Paul McFarlane's job interview is like. Paul, here's the thing. The good news is we got good players. The bad news is our power play's kind of trash. I understand, and I'm also unnervingly jacked for an assistant coach. Yeah, it's pretty true. Anyway, we were hoping you could help us with our power play. You got any ideas? Alright, well, let's start with last year. Can you uh, draw up your power play from last season and I'll have a look at it? Yeah, alright, just give me a sec here, alright. Strategy, go go players. There. That's that's it. That's it. That's it. That's your whole strategy. The whole kit and caboodle. Can I uh, see that a sec? Here you go. I know exactly what you're missing. There. That's it. That's your new power play. You're a freaking genius kid. You're hired. How's that? Mitch things! Multiple 
plural! He can do more than one thing, and the power play is that much more dangerous for it. You want proof? There it is! Seven seconds. Leafs are up one nothing. Leafs have shoot the Blue Jackets 10-9 to in the first period. Freddie Anderson stops all nine of the Blue Jacket shots, and the one-shot difference is all the difference in the world. Thing is, the Leafs could have had a much better first period, but Andreas Janssen struggled. Beautiful on the screen. No one's denying that. And I actually think he had a decent game overall. We'll get to that later. But he negated two power plays. A slashing penalty ended one power play, and a pretty decent slew foot ended another, like, right away. Not the greatest, and going back to when he was in the minors, taking penalties was a little bit of an issue. I'd rather him do it now and clean it up than do it later. And he's got a big opportunity in front of him. He's playing with Matthews and Nylander for what will hopefully, for him, be all year. He's essentially the team's top left winger. And the second Mikheyev learns fluent English, you know Babcock's gonna slide in those DM, so Yanni's gotta perform. And he does about halfway through the second. Puck in the Blue Jacket zone, Matthews wins the faceoff to the left, Morgan Riley comes in, shoots it down to the corner to Nylander. Nylander skates, has patience, finds Riley. Riley over to Cody Cece, who nobody's got. Now listen, Andreas Janssen has got some skill. He's got great skill. He had a hat trick last year, scored 20 goals, we know what he can do. But if you were the third guy in a line with Austin Matthews and William Nylander and you were not immediately crashing the net after every faceoff, you ought to be fired. Luckily, that's exactly what he does. Zoom! And Corpus Allo cannot see a thing. I see Janssen in front. I see Corpus Allo not being able to see anything. I see CC with the puck. And I see a wide open net. And had I not finished my popcorn before I started shooting this video, this is where I'd be eating it. And he snipes the thing! Cody CC is a leaf! And a goal scorer, that's his first as a Leaf, and the Leafs take a 2 nothing lead. That beautiful man who I never doubted once, never even not once, I always loved that he wore number 83. I don't, I don't, I can't even make myself. It was his number in junior. Then his junior number was weird too. Number 83 for Cody Cece, by the way, only the Leafs' fourth highest number. Yeah, Lou's not here anymore. Barry Tavares, Nylander, or the others, I know it was gonna drive you nuts. Now, I saw a few people freaking out after the game because Cody Cece played over 24 minutes, which is a lot of minutes. Well, let's be fair about it. He had a great game. I thought he had a great game. The thing that concerned me the most about his game in the Ottawa game was he looked slow. I don't know if that was nerves or what, because in the preseason, I never really got that impression. And I'm like, uh-oh, the jump up and play. Is he actually a slow player? In this game, no, he was moving around. He was breaking up plays. There was that one really good one. I think it was four on four. He looked good. But with regards to his ice time, context matters. And I thought of this the second I saw that number. Do you remember the end of the second period? Wasn't good. Now, amazingly, CC finished with positive possession numbers, but the Blue Jackets just ran a fire drill on the Leafs for at least the final minute of the second period. It wasn't good. CC played over 24 minutes, Muzzin almost 23, and they were both out for the final minute and 50. The seconds of the second period. That is an enormous shift. And both of those guys only had eight shifts in the second period. CC had 12 in the first, 12 in the third. So you can criticize Babcock for playing him that much, but if he had his way, uh, had they not gotten hemmed in their own zone anyway, I think he would have shaved at least a minute off that. And he was a key penalty killer for the Leafs too in this game. Uh, there was one penalty he wasn't able to kill, but it wasn't his fault. Columbus Blue Jackets on the power play, off the faceoff scramble. Freddie's like, I'm gonna poke it. Hockey God says, you throw Thought. Cam Atkinson scores because that's what Cam Atkinson does, especially against the Leafs. The guy is a Leaf killer. He's the next Matt Reed, which means he's going to be on the Marlies any second now. It is now a one goal game, and the building is loud, and that's why. That's why it's loud. Yep. Mm, please don't let that happen again. Well, it didn't. Not in the second period, but we head to the third. In the third, it's not every single shift. But every now and then, you just see this moment where Mitch Marner has the Mountain Dew or the Red Bull or whatever it is kick in, and he goes from from Mother Beep! Spin moves like he's Tyson Berry from from Mother Beep to the net! My head actually really hurts after that. He shoots and scores! And by shoots and scores, I mean he like sort of half beat Corpus Allo and then he's like, where's the puck and knocked it in? Doesn't matter, it counts! And it's Mitch Marner's second goal of the game. How about the goal suck. And John Tavares getting all the assists. Is Tavares the reason for Marner's success? To answer our new poll question on hockey.questions. Holy unfair is he good. And speaking of unfair, Leafs on the power play in the third. Austin Matthews has the puck on his stick on the power play, which is an excellent thing if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. <gasps> Austin! 
Captain! Um, I, maybe it's because I used to work at the Toronto Zoo. Um, I like, uh, like nature shows, like nature documentaries where they like follow animals around and they're scurrying about the Sahara Desert or something like that. And you get to just follow them through their natural life and you get to go, wow, I'm learning and isn't this interesting. But every now and then you come across a scene where a pack of hyenas just tear an antelope apart limb from limb as it screams for its life. And you're like, damn dude, I know you gotta eat to survive, but that was unnecessary. That was how I felt watching Matthew shoot on Corpusella. Oh my goodness was I have never heard a color commentator just go ugh. Between the regular season and playoffs Ray Ferraro played in over 1300 NHL games. He's been a color commentator and I don't even know how many of them. He has basically spent the better part of his life basking in hockey fumes and that shot made him go ugh. That guy is one of the voices for NHL 20. A, a video game. A hockey video game where you gotta ham it up a little bit because it's a video game and never once, not once in the game does he go ugh because of a ridiculous shot you had. Never once have I seen a clip video where Nasher's going ew, ew, <laughs> and heard Ray Ferraro go ugh. But let me tell you something about what Ray Ferraro said about that goal. He's right! He's right! Ugh! It's just, you cannot teach that. You can't, there is no YouTube tutorial. What's up guys, it's Coach Jeremy. My tracksuit's in the wash. And today I'm gonna show you how to have one of the top three wrist shots on the planet. Jeremy's not nearly that aggressive, but you get the point. The ugh was the final nail in the coffin. That and a spectacular performance from Freddie Anderson. Darn it, he should have had a shutout if it weren't for that one little blip, but who cares? two points and now they take on Montreal tomorrow. Actually, I've been shooting this so long today, today. A few final shots, uh, they had a new look uh, fourth line in this one. They had Spezza and Patan fill in for Timoshov and Shore. I thought they looked great. Patan was a bat out of hell and Babcock was very congratulatory, I guess. He had high praise for Spezza. Justin Hall looked fine. He looked comfortable, you know, because he's been uh, playing hockey, which uh, the Leafs ought to let him do if they want him to play hockey for them. And Kasperi Kapanen with that huge shot block, but he came back in the game and looked fine. Hopefully he's able to play against Montreal. By the way, Spezza and Patan are out against Montreal. They're gonna be putting in Shore, Timoshov, and Marinson goes in for Hall. Perfectly fine. If you have spares, use them. I've been screaming this for years. Thanks for finally doing it. Quick questions. How will you celebrate the 82-0-0 season? I won't because I'm not trying to go to a President's Trophy parade. Eyes on the prize! Are you in? Connor gets it and yes! How do you think Sandine played tonight? I thought he was fine. He wasn't great. Uh, yeah, that one time where he fell down. I thought he was fine. I still like the way he moves the puck, advances the play. Babcock played him nearly 13 minutes all uh, even strength. Sandine's biggest hurdle that he's got to overcome besides the uh, increased speed of play and Montreal is going to be a test for him especially on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. His biggest issue is Rasmus Sandine now has to live up to the level, he has to live up to the bar that he has set for himself. And while I do appreciate that the Leafs are using spares, which I think they should, I don't know if it's the healthiest thing for him to go Marinson Hall, Marinson Hall, he's a rookie. Montreal's gonna be a challenge and I'm excited to see what he does with it. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video, click subscribe. If you really liked it, tell all your friends. Ah, no cannon. Oh, it's so much better. Wheelchairs, walkers, and sending kids with physical disabilities to a fun camp where they can have inclusive fun. That's what I'm trying to do. $50,000 is what I'm trying to raise for Easter Seals Ontario. There's a link down below if you can please donate. And a few did from last video. Thank you very much. I would be incredibly grateful. Thank you.